Zhou Lina snorted and put away her phone. Her cousin Xing'er was going to help the votes increase greatly by posting just one Weibo post. Suddenly, the instant comments were dominated by Li Xing'er's fans. When they knew that Zheng Yuan was Li Xing'er's relative, they started to attack Gu Weiwei. The black swan is so ugly. Such a terrible dancer. Black swan is hideous. Vote for white swan. Just asking for trouble when she is battling with a professional. On stage, Gu Weiwei spun around, lifting and kicking her legs, leaping across the stage perfectly. However, the live stream was still full of comments that supported the white swan. Jing Yuan's face was becoming more and more twisted the longer she watched Gu Weiwei. An outsider might not be able to tell, but she herself understood that Gu Weiwei's moves were as good as those performed by a professional dancer like her. She had underestimated her. Seeing the instant messages that supported Jing Yuan whilst Gu Weiwei was on stage, Ji Qing couldn't help but notice that Jing Yuan's votes were also constantly increasing. Although the few rational public viewers supported Black Swan and said that she danced well, they were all drowned out by Li Xingr's fans. Qian Qian, how many more votes can your cousin offer now? Luo Qian Qian had a cousin who was a live streamer for games and he was very popular. He had helped with the votes a minute ago. Afraid not too many more. Luo Qianqian whispered with teeth clenched. I will call my father and ask him to log into his Weibo. Sure, sure, hurry up. Ji Qing nodded. Qianqian's father was a famous composer who had written music for a few singers. His Weibo post would surely help with the voting. Zhou Lina and Zhu Xiaoqin laughed proudly when they saw that Jing Yuan's votes were many times more than those of Gu Weiwei's. Still not convinced? You won't be able to catch up. You are being tricky. If we compete with abilities, you may be the losing side. Ji Qing said with teeth clenched. Wei Wei was dancing well too and if it had not been because of Jing Yuan's popularity from the ballet troupe, Jing Yuan might have been on the losing side. Now they had even asked the popular star Li Xing'er to increase the votes, so it was very difficult for Gu Wei Wei to catch up. As they were talking, a man wearing glasses came backstage and asked Ji Qing politely, Excuse me, which one of you is Mu Wei Wei? Ji Qing looked up and said, Wei Wei is on the stage. Vote for her if you are here for her. She instructed the glasses man as one vote would matter regardless of the stage. Zhu Xiaoqin sneered seeing that she did not want to give up even one vote. What about me giving you a vote too? Ha <laughs> ha. The man made a phone call after he voted and walked out from backstage. Third master, the girl is in school, but it seems that she is competing with someone in a live stream, there are some votes or something. What are you waiting for? Send me the live stream link. The man on the other side of the phone bellowed impatiently. The man ended the phone call instantly and shared the live stream. Luo Qianqian came backstage after the call. My father is in a meeting, he can't reply to me until half an hour later. The contest is finishing in a quarter of an hour. Zhou Lina snorted and said as she tilted her head sideways. Xiao Qing, think about what we should get our assistant to do tomorrow. Zhou Lina and Zhu Xiaoqin were just about to celebrate when the students from dance class shouted in excitement. It is rising. Black Swan's vote is rising crazily. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian stopped arguing with Zhou Lina but turned to the live stream instead. The votes for Black Swan rose so rapidly it was like a rocket flying into the sky. Oh my god, here comes the justice. As the instant comments increased more and more, the table started to be turned. Black Swan is so cool. Black Swan is so powerful. I vote for Black Swan, because I can bow down for beauty. Master you are right, we will vote for Black Swan. Black Swan is cooler than Master. Let's all vote for Black Swan. Zhu Xiaoqin could tell that Gu Weiwei's votes were rising so fast that they were catching up with Jing Yuan's. Zhou Lina's face brushed an exquisite makeup, twisted violently. What is it going on? Zhu Xiaoqin and Yi Mei had not found out why the votes were rising when the girls of dance class screamed out of excitement. Ah, it is she. God she is watching the live stream. God she is cheering for Mu Weiwei. Wow, he is indeed my idol. Who on earth was she? The most popular young star in the whole of Hualand and all the way throughout the entirety of Asia. He had 50 million fans on Weibo and his looks were charming and handsome. His concerts were always sold out with waiting lists and every brand wanted to collaborate with him and have him as their ambassador. More importantly, he was the third master of the Fu's enterprise, the biggest financial group in Hualand, Fu Xi. Luo Qianqian just could not believe it, so she switched to Weibo and saw Xi's account had just shared the live stream with only two sentences. Black Swan is cooler than me. I am not convinced. 
then, Fushi and two of his best friends reposted the Weibo post as well. Black Swan is indeed cooler than you. Black Swan is indeed cooler than you, me too. The live stream room, which was only previously being watched by 200,000 people, was now thronged with millions of viewers and it was still increasing in popularity. Gu Weiwei who had, prior to this boost in views, lost by hundreds of thousands of votes, now exceeded Zheng Yuan within three minutes. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian as well as the girls from dance class screamed in each other's arms. Zhou Lina and Zhu Xiaoqin were not convinced. They snorted. So what? Let's see who is more capable. True, everyone knows who the real ability is when we have asked the Capital Ballet Troupe and the Royal Ballet Troupe to join in. On the stage, Gu Weiwei and Jing Yuan, side by side, spun around five times holding their legs as they did so and leaping up for their own performances. As Jing Yuan saw Gu Weiwei landing elegantly after the large leap and gritted her teeth. Then let's see who can do the most difficult maneuver, Fuet. Gu Weiwei had a very elegant body shape and with the charming makeup on her face, she was as arrogant as a queen. As you wish. The music had become varied and the two girls stretched out their arms and started spinning, extending their legs and drawing it back in, to touch the back of their knees, to complete the turn. Jing Yuan spun 26 circles and confidently believed that Mu Weiwei was not going to beat her. She had thought that Mu Weiwei would give up after 10 but after 20 turns, Mu Weiwei did not only stop but also completed each one perfectly and beautifully. Jing Yuan became so anxious that she started to spin faster and harder than before, trying to exceed Mu Weiwei. But she did it so fast that she fell down upon the stage with a loud cracking sound. Gu Weiwei completed the 32 turns of foot elegantly and calmly as the right leg landed slightly on the ground, curtsying to the audience below the stage and the camera. That instant, comments erupted out. Buddha. That is the 32 turns of Fuet we have only heard of in the stories. I have kneeled down for her. My knees are broken because of my kneeling. Please, accept my admiration. Mom is wondering why I am watching the phone whilst kneeling on the ground. Black Swan is way too powerful. Black Swan curtsied as the curtain drew down elegantly, whilst the white swan remained collapsed on the stage, presenting the loser and the winner clearly. The moment Gu Weiwei went backstage, Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian hugged her full of excitement and joy. Wei Wei, we won. We won. The students from the dance class came over to cheer with them out of admiration, after watching her 32 turns of fouette. They had thought that they would definitely lose because of the failing votes. They had never expected that their idol, God Shi, would suddenly come and watch the live stream and show his support for Black Swan. The vast group of fans had squeezed themselves into the live stream and quickly doubled Black Swan's votes within minutes. Gu Weiwei whispered as she was held tightly in their arms, let me take a seat, I feel a bit dizzy. She had studied ballet before, but she was indeed not as capable as Jing Yuan when it came to dancing. However she had learnt martial arts before, so she was able to complete the perfect 32 turns foot through her knowledge of using her muscles to the optimum limit. Actually, she was feeling very dizzy and her legs hurt. But Jing Yuan must be suffering even more than her at the moment, because she had heard the sound of bones cracking. That injury might make her incapable of being able to dance in the future. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian helped her to sit down and gave her some water. Do you need to visit the hospital? Gu Weiwei took a sip of the water and shook her head. No need, taking a rest will be enough. One girl from dance class was reading through Weibo when her eyes widened at the sight of the hot topics search list. Oh my god, Mu Weiwei, my god of men and you are at the top of the list. What? God of men? Gu Weiwei was startled. Ji Qing also logged into Weibo and looked around. At the 20th rank on the hot topics search list, there turned out to be the following tag, Shi Black Swan. Ah, that is my idol. He saved our lives. If it had not been for Shi's fans who had entered the live stream during the last few minutes, they would have lost in votes. But, how did our third master end up seeing the live stream? One girl asked curiously. It was a very heated contest within Inching High School, and Li Xinger had helped with the votes too but it should not be so popular for even she to take notice. Who cares? He saved us, Ji Qing said as she threw a look at Gu Weiwei. She had lived with the Fu family before, so it was not a weird thing for Fu Shi to come to her rescue. They were cheering so happily but at the same time, Zhou Lina became very anxious. Seeing the instant comments attacking Zhang Yuan, she was very angry to see Gu Weiwei's black swan being praised. Her hands shivered and the phone dropped to the ground. Ms. Yi, what should we do now? 
The situation was already out of control. The intention was to cook a story for her, but the mission failed. And Mu Weiwei gained the position at the hot search list. Call the company and make use of this opportunity to get you at the top of the trending list too. Yi Mei said calmly. She was a very popular guy and if their names were linked together, then the popularity would undoubtedly arrive. Ji Cheng and Xi's fans became very annoyed when they heard this. They were bullied by them and now their rival wanted to suck up to their idol's popularity. However, before they were able to argue with each other, Jin Yuan, who had been forgotten and left alone on the stage, was helped backstage by the staff. Without saying anything more, she slapped Zhou Lina, who was on the phone with her agent, hard across her face. Jing Yuan not only startled Zhou Lina but also Ji Qing and the girls. Before they were able to argue, a civil war had started. Luo Qianqian helped Gu Weiwei stand up. Let's go, it's late. I want to see them fighting. Ji Qing did not want to miss the show. Jing Yuan's slap to Zhou Lina seemed much more comforting than one from herself. But she deserved to have that right. Jing Yuan accepted the challenge because of her and Zhou Lina did not even show any care towards her when she was injured so badly on stage. It was normal that she slapped her. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian helped Gu Weiwei to get changed as they spoke to her outside the drapery. Weiwei, did you know that you could beat Jing Yuan? No, I was only sure that I could beat her in skills. Gu Weiwei got changed and pulled open the drapery. Jing Yuan is very competitive. She was definitely going to try to beat me on the last fouet, so she was definitely going to be injured. If her legs are injured, she would miss the opportunity of becoming chief dancer. She will also miss the chance to enter the royal ballet troupe. An opportunity she has been waiting for five years. She cussed Mu Weiwei's injuries, so she lost the chance to study with the capital ballet troupe, so she of course had to pay her back at this time. In this way, she might have won in votes but she would have lost in skills. Luo Qianqian said after she realized what the plan was. But tonight, she not only failed in skills but also in votes. She was totally defeated. But if she had won the vote, you would still have had to work for Zhou Lina. Ji Qing said. Gu Weiwei smiled mysteriously. Well, I have a bargaining chip here. She had Zhou Meiqin's pictures, and one text to Zhou Meiqin would make Zhou Lina become docile. However, she had never expected that Fuxi would offer a hand. The three girls packed up and left the school as they saw Jing Yuan leaving in an ambulance. Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian helped Gu Weiwei to the roadside and said worriedly, Let us help you home, all right? Your feet have swelled up. No need, I can call a taxi. It takes no time at all. Gu Weiwei turned them down. Fu Hanjing made a call in the afternoon and he might have returned to the apartment by now. If they helped her back and saw Fu Hanjing with her, she would find it difficult to explain what was going on. Seeing her insistence on taking a taxi, Luo Qianqian waved down a taxi and helped her up. I will ask for leave for you. You can take a rest at home tomorrow. Gu Weiwei leaned herself against the back seat out of tiredness. When the car pulled up to the Jinxiu compound, she bought some medicine for her feet and walked into the apartment slowly. The moment she walked up to the stairs, she saw Fu Hanjing coming out of the building. He spoke to her in a low voice, Why are you not answering my calls? Gu Weiwei was startled and then answered, I didn't hear it. Fu Hanjing stretched out his arms for her, but she dodged him, and then was still scooped into his long arms. She was not a short girl, but compared to Fu Hanjing, who had a height of 190 centimeters, she was very small. As they arrived at the elevator, she pressed the button for therefore and said, Weren't you going out? Fu Hanjing answered back coldly, I was picking you up. Thanks. How guilty she felt to have this president pick her up in person. Back to the apartment. Fu Hanjing placed her down onto the couch of the living room, removed her shoes and frowned deeply when he saw her swollen toes. Should I take you to the hospital? No need, I bought the medicine. She took out her own medicine. Hang on. Fu Hanjing said as he stood up and went to the bathroom. Within no time at all, he came out carrying a bowl of cold water and placed her feet into the cold water. Seeing him not leaving, Gu Weiwei reminded him with a dry laugh. Thanks, I can do it myself. Go back to your study, you have work. Without obeying her words, Fu Hanjing waited for a couple of minutes before scooping out her feet from the water and wiping them with the dry towel. Then, he started to read the instructions on the medicine she had brought back. Startled, Gu Weiwei withdrew her feet and said, President Fu, please, let me do it myself. Fu Hanjing gripped her toes and pulled them out from underneath the towel as he used a cotton swab to dab on the medicine over the swollen areas. The pungent smell of medicine spread throughout the air. 
Gu Weiwei looked at this man who was dabbing her toes with medicine and felt a bit dizzy. When she lived with the Gu family, she had also injured her feet when she was practicing martial arts and back then, Gu Siding was also nervous and had carried her back home. Then he had asked the doctor and servants to take care of her whilst keeping her company, staying next to her. She always thought that because she and Gu Siding grew up together love would be easy, but despite this, something was missing between them when it came to love. In this moment, she finally understood what it was. What was missing between them was a certainty of whether he loved her or not. She had always heard that Fu Hanjin was a very mysterious person but when she was in front of this man, what she could feel was that he was into her for real, and he was truly worried about her. Fu Hanjin looked up and saw her eyes turning red. Let's visit the hospital if it hurts that much. Gu Weiwei came back to herself and shook her head. No need, some rest will be fine. Fu Hanjin was just about to dab medicine upon the other foot when the phone in the study rang. Then he went into the study and turned on the speaker on the phone. Brother, please compliment me, now. Sister-in-law was competing with someone today in dance, I led all of my fans to vote for her. Gu Weiwei's lips twisted. It must be from Fu Xi, the third master. Without saying a word, Fu Hanjing allowed Fu Xi to talk on the other side of the phone, sounding joyful. I just sent you the video. Take a look at it. Sister-in-law was spinning like a spinning top. Gu Weiwei thought with clenched teeth, you are the spinning top. Also, sister-in-law's body is supple and tender, you can definitely do it in many different ways. Third master. Seeing Fu Hanjing remaining silent, Gu Weiwei could not help but interrupt Fu Xi's whispering. I can hear everything. Please watch your tongue. Fu Xi was silent for three seconds before lowering his voice and asking, Bro, did I just, interrupt something? Yes. Fu Hanjing said and directly ended the call. Gu Weiwei's lip twitched, what was he interrupting? That was going to cause a misunderstanding. President Fu, we are living under the same roof, but we are not sleeping together. I suggest that you should correct Third Master regarding the way he addresses me, I am not his sister-in-law. Fu Hanjing put away the first aid kit and left. You will be sooner or later. At the Capital First Folk Hospital, people from the Li family and the Zhou family were both waiting for the results from Jing Yuan's operation. Jing Yuan's mother Li Jiaqian glared at Zhou Lina and scolded her. If anything happens to Yuan, you will take all the blame. Seeing her own daughter's swelling face, Wang Fun was very annoyed already. Seeing Li Jiaqian blaming her own daughter, she refuted her immediately. It is not Lina's problem. She made the mistake herself when dancing. You, Li Jiaqian was about to burst into scolding words when an elegant woman walked over to them. She stopped herself. Miss Fang, what are you doing here so late at night? I am worried about Jing Yuan. I need to see what the doctor says. Fang Yuyan was the woman who came over to them. She was a teacher from the Capital Ballet Troupe. The doctor is doing the operation now, there should not be any problems. She won't be affected. Li Jiaqian explained quickly. Fang Yuyan smiled and said nothing more. Ten minutes later, Jing Yuan came out of the operation room. The group accompanied the patient back to the ward as Li Jiaqian asked nervously, Doctor, how is my daughter's foot? She won't be affected will she? In dance, I mean. The doctor showed the x-ray scans to the group and said, her normal life will not be affected if she is looked after well, but she may need to take a rest from dancing and see how she recovers. Fang Yuyan took a look at the scans and asked further, how long will it take if she goes through a proper recovery? The doctor thought for a while and said, eight months to a year. If she tries to hasten the healing process and gets injured again, she will never be able to stand up on stage again. Jing Yuan's pale face turned even paler and she was worried that Fang Yuyan was going to say something. Ms. Fang, I will recover soon, I. Jing Yuan, you heard what the doctor said. You will need at least one year to recover but the troop needs to carry on. Fang Yuyan looked cold and said straightforwardly, so, the current chief dancer stays. Ms. Fang, I. Without waiting for her reply, Fang Yuyan made a quick decision. As for the studies at the Royal Ballet Troupe, it won't work if you go there injured like this. We will arrange for someone else to take your place. You better take a good rest now. Ms. Fong, Yuan has been waiting for the position of chief dancer for years, you know that. Li Jiaqian took hold of Fang Yuyan's arms and tried to persuade her. She will recover very soon, please give her one more chance. It is not me, but she herself who does not cherish her own opportunity. Fang Yuyan looked even less pleased when she saw Jing Yuan lying in the bed. You have not only lost your own face but also our troops' face and you have made such a mess. 
The Weibo comments of their troupe were all laden with irony, commenting about how their professional dancers were worse than those from the general public. It was already very kind of the troupe to not expel her when she made such a mess. She was definitely not going to allow the troupe to be humiliated by waiting for Zhang Yuan just so that she could take the position of chief dancer. After Fang Yuyan left, Zhang Yuan punched the bed and clenched her teeth. It is all Mu Weiwei's fault, it is all her fault. She had ruined everything she had tried so hard to obtain. She should have disabled her all those years ago so that she would never be able to dance again in her entire lifetime. If she had known about this day she would have made sure it was done. Zhou Meiqin came to the hospital the moment she received the call. Li Xing'er was with her and she was wearing a mask. On the way, she kept refreshing Weibo and noticed that the tag topic of, she and Black Swan, was almost reaching the top 10 hot search list. Many of Xi's fans were making comments filled with irony on her own Weibo post, which annoyed her greatly. The moment she entered the ward, she removed her mask and swore at Zhou Lina. You dumbass. I gave you such a great opportunity, but you pushed Mu Weiwei up instead on the hot search list. She herself was even sworn at by Xi's fans, which really humiliated her. After being slapped by Zhang Yuan and lectured by Li Jiaqian, Zhou Lina burst out in tears when she was lectured by Li Xing'er at that moment. Everything went fine, but she supported Mu Weiwei all of a sudden, so the situation turned around. It should have been her who was on the top search list today, but now she had done everything for someone else instead. She had failed to cook up the story and Mu Weiwei ended up becoming popular. She was feeling wronged inwardly but she had no way out. She was the most popular star in Hua Land and one word from him online was very influential. Wang Fen took her wronged daughter into her arms and said, if it had not been for Yuan who had collapsed on the stage, none of this would have happened. What did you say? My daughter fell down and lost her position as chief dancer and the opportunity of going to the royal ballet troupe, and you are still blaming her? Hearing Wang Fen blaming her own daughter, Li Jiaqian was so irritated that she wanted to lunge at her and slap her. Enough! Zhou Meiqin took hold of Li Jiaqian and snapped at her. Help Yuan get better and when she recovers, I will come up with a method to send her abroad. Li Jiaqian turned to Zhou Meiqin. Are you serious? Zhou Meiqin nodded. Don't think about anything more. Have her recover soon and I will take care of the rest. Mu Weiwei had set her up and she was becoming more and more powerful. Zhou Lina took a look at the text message sent by Yimei and said discreetly, Aunt, Cousin Xing'er, Mizzy said that there have already been some agents and album companies who are searching for Mu Weiwei at school now. What if, she enters the entertainment industry? Although she did not want to admit it, Mu Weiwei's face was way too attractive and could easily appear in the entertainment industry. Li Xing'er glared at her, if it had not been because of her dumb behavior, Mu Weiwei would not have become the most popular girl online overnight. Zhou Meiqin's face sank and then she said, don't worry, she won't. What is your method? Li Xing'er looked at her in astonishment. Someone can stop her. Zhou Meiqin grabbed her bag and said, I have an appointment. You girls can go home by yourselves. Finishing her sentence, she left the ward alone and got into her car that was in the parking lot. Then she picked up her phone and made a call. No more waiting. One more week, and no matter what you do, you must get that girl. Then the price has to be higher. Wang Weidong's voice rose from the other side of the phone. Zhou Meiqin's look was lethal, this B asterisk TCH was a ticking time bomb for everyone. I can double that. As long as she is caught and eliminated. I can pay 500,000 yuan more. At the Jinxiao compound. Gu Weiwei asked for two days off to stay at home so that she could get better. Due to the chat with Ji Qing on WeChat the night before, she slept late into the afternoon. She did not get up from the bed until the room door was knocked. But shouldn't Fu Hanjing, the workaholic, at this time, be at the company? She pulled open the door and found Su Qian, the assistant to Fu Hanjing. Mississippi Mu, the president asked me to deliver the food. Please, eat it whilst it is still warm. Food delivery? Gu Weiwei frowned. Su Qian smiled and said, the food is in the dining room. I will need to head back to the company if you don't need anything more. Gu Weiwei nodded, astonished. Thank you. After seeing Su Qian off, she had just returned to the dining room to eat the food, when Fu Hanjin called. Did Su Qian bring the food to you? Yes, it has just arrived. Gu Weiwei said as she saw the hot dishes on the table. Thanks. I'm having dinner tonight and I may be home late. Fu Hanjing's voice sounded nice. Okay, and, your stomach is not very well, don't drink too much. Gu Weiwei said one sentence after thinking for a long time. Okay. 
Fu Hanjing chuckled. Eat your food, I am sending the call. Du Weiwei felt her forehead out of regret, cursing at herself for being so b asterisk tchy. They were not in a relationship, why should she remind him not to drink too much? Fu Hanjing had been living in this apartment recently, and he had had her in his arms the whole time when her feet were injured. After washing up last night, he had kissed her face. He had taken her as someone from his family. She ate the food, replied to some texts, put on her clothes and went to take a walk down to the cafe on the street. She had suddenly became famous online because of Zhou Lina and Fu Shi for some reason. She had received four calls from four agency companies, so she had a meeting with someone face to face this afternoon. She had planned to enter the entertainment industry after the exams. But Zhou Lina had somehow made her popular, pushing her into the industry ahead of time. She had met the four agents from the four companies in a row this afternoon. But she hadn't agreed to any of them, only accepted their proposals and name card for further consideration. She was just leafing through the proposals of the four agency companies by the window when a man dressed in a blush pink suit carrying a briefcase took a seat in front of her without asking. Then he gave her a contract. Sign it. Gu Weiwei pointed at herself. Are you talking to me? The man dabbed his lips with tinted lip balm carefully. Mu Weiwei, sign your name here and I will be your agent. Gu Weiwei raised her eyebrows. Who are you? When everyone else was talking to her politely, this man came with a contract and asked her to sign it directly. The man put away his tinted lip balm, brought out a business card on the table with a feminine flourish. Jolin from Shi Culture. Shi Culture? She realized who had sent this man when she heard the name. She was that Shi. Shi Culture was Fu Shi's company, the third master of the Fu family. During the past two days, Ji Qing had always been speaking of her idol on WeChat, which gave her some knowledge of Fu Shi. Shi Culture was a newly established company by Fu Shi under the Fu's Enterprises direction, so that he could take charge of the entertainment sector. But this master did not think that the employees of the company were capable enough, so he gave up the position of CEO and went into the entertainment field in person. Because of his excellent looks and vastly wealthy family, he soon became the most popular male star in the industry he drew attention from every single angle. Seeing that she was not signing, Jolin grabbed the business cards and proposals of the other companies and chucked them into the trash and said, she culture is your best choice. Gu Weiwei smiled. Sure, I will sign it. She glanced over the content of the contract and signed her name. Some of the other agency companies were larger than she culture and some were startups. But the companies were cultivating other artists too, so even if she signed the contract, the contract would not allow her to enter the film industry. The report said that Ling Yen, after her recovery, was soon going to star in a movie. So she did not have much time to take it step by step with other companies. After having a comprehensive consideration, she culture was the shortcut she could take and the best choice for her too. Jolin took back the contract, stuffed it into the briefcase and said, the company will soon, based on your current condition, make a stardom plan for you. Do you have any plans for yourself? I want to be at the audition of the long wind. Gu Weiwei said straightforwardly. Jolin sized her up and said, the female lead character has already been decided. She was physically excellent and a good dancer too. As long as she could sing, she could become a singer. If she was going to be an actress, she would just be eye candy. I don't need the leading role. I just need the role of Tang Xiaoqi. Jolin looked at her with suspicion. Are you trying to ruin yourself? The Long Wind is a classical masterpiece in the wuxia theme and Tang Xiaoqi was an annoying character. Was she really smart to ask for this kind of role instead? I just want this role. Gu Weiwei said with determination. Got it. We will try our best to get it for you. If there is nothing else, I am off now. I will call you when I need something. Jolin checked the time and left in a hurry. Gu Weiwei thought for a while and called out to Jolin. Well, since I have signed the contract, will the company arrange the accommodation? She felt that Fu Hanjing being around her was creepy. She was afraid that the demon would eat her up. Jolin shook his head. There are no places available for you. Stay in your own home. Although there was an empty building available for their actresses, the third master had stressed that she was not going to stay there. She culture had Fu's enterprise as their background and there were many people who wanted to enter the company and who were turned down. Jolin truly had no idea why the third master wanted him to sign this internet famous girl in person. Was he planning to sign her on so that he could sleep with her? Gu Weiwei let out a sigh and saw off Jolin, it seemed that she had to stay with Fu Hanjing after all. After she left the cafe, she found that the day was still young, 
so she decided to meet with Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian after they had finished at school and tell them about the contract signing. So she sent them text messages and asked to meet them at the park nearby. Then she saw a couple in love by the lakeside. The boy looked elegant and somehow familiar, so she spared him a second glance. But the moment she looked at him, the boy looked at her too and then he started to walk towards her. He grabbed her from the bench she was sat on and pulled her over to the girl. I have a girlfriend and here she is. WTF? Looking at that good-looking boy's face, Gu Weiwei was very confused. The girl glared at Gu Weiwei who had been pulled over, still unable to believe what he had just said. I don't believe you, you lied to me. You don't have a girlfriend, you are lying. She is my girlfriend, we have been together for four years. The man said and gripped Gu Weiwei's hands so tightly that she tried hard to escape. Damn, what the hell? Girl, you have misunderstood. I really... Weiwei and I have been together since junior school, but she is too introverted to reveal anything. The man interrupted Gu Weiwei and said. Gu Weiwei looked at this man in horror. It seems that this man was someone who knew Mu Weiwei. The girl became so sad that she ran away after being turned down. The show is over, can you let go off my hand now? The man pulled her closer, shortening the distance between them. The handsome face became larger in front of her. Mu Weiwei, we are not in a show. Gu Weiwei frowned. So. The man looked at her for a second and sneered. It seems that you have forgotten that you once wrote me a love letter. A love letter? Gu Weiwei raised her eyebrows. When did she ever write a love letter? Seeing that she did not want to admit it, the man said with clenched teeth, you wrote me so many love letters, for a whole year in a row, in third year junior school. You came to Ingcheng because of me. Have you forgotten everything? Gu Weiwei suddenly thought of something. Her eyes widened in horror. Oh man, she did write love letters. Or to be more precise, it had been Mu Weiwei who did it. No wonder he was a bit familiar looking. He was the boy who went to the same school with Mu Weiwei in junior school, namely the most popular guy in Inching High School, Qin LV. His scores were always the highest and he was very good looking. He was also the grandson of Qin's finance head, so he was extremely popular among the girls at school. Mu Weiwei had courted him back then, and she did transfer herself to Inching High School because of him. But after the car accident, she started to like Fu Hanjing instead. She flung away Qin LV's hands and massaged her arms that were feeling painful because of his pulling and tight grip. I did, but you turned me down. Now I'm not. I am allowing you to be my girlfriend. Qin LV said. After the car accident, she barely appeared in school. He once went to visit her at school but the Li family said that she had moved out. And because of some contest he was participating in, he was away from school too. It was not until the day before yesterday, when he saw the news on Weibo, that he understood that she was back in school. He came to school for her. Sorry, I have changed my mind. Gu Weiwei said. Damn, he was too young for love. What do you mean? Qin LV's face sunk when he heard her words. Gu Weiwei let out an impatient sigh and said straightforwardly, I have fallen for someone else, not you. Understand? I won't allow that. Qin LV said with a lowered voice. He had been searching for her for so long and now she was telling him that she had fallen for someone else. He was not going to accept that. You have no rights, Gu Weiwei said, feeling amused at the sight of this annoyed, young man. Qin LV gripped her hands and said with a serious tone, I am your boyfriend. Gu Weiwei felt her forehead. We have broken up, so we are not in a relationship now. It was Mu Weiwei's problem if she had courted him. But she was not Mu Weiwei, and she had no time to fall for this young man. Qin LV stopped her from going further, looking serious. Mu Weiwei, who do you think I am? You teased me when you were happy and you kicked me away when you were displeased. Gu Weiwei frowned and said, Yes, I did write those things, but that was years ago. Now you come and tell me that you are my boyfriend, are you mental or what? I have my own reasons and I don't want to break up. Qin LV said. He made a promise to his family, no relationships before college, otherwise he would have to accept whatever his family arranged for him. He had thought that she would be waiting for him but after the accident, she disappeared from his world completely. It took a long time before he found her again, but she told him that she had fallen for someone else. Oh my god, you annoying child. Why can't you understand me? Gu Weiwei was a bit annoyed. Who is that man? Qin LV asked further. After she had left the Li family and stayed absent from school, she must have been staying with that man. Gu Weiwei looked around and said, let's talk somewhere else. After saying this, she took Qin LV into the small copse of trees. Can we talk now? Who is the man? 
Chin LV asked further. Hang on. Gu Weiwei said brightly, and took hold of the tie from around his neck. I need this for a moment. Chin LV did not expect that she would stay so close to him. He could smell the scent of her maiden hair wafting into his nose. His heart could not help but beat heavily when he saw this girl's long eyelashes. When he came back to himself, his two hands had already been tied up. Mu Weiwei, what are you doing? Gu Weiwei clapped her hands and said with a smile, I really have nothing to talk about with you. If you want to talk, talk to this tree. Mu Weiwei, who is he? Chin LV could not resist his curiosity. Gu Weiwei took two more steps and gave him a warning as she turned around. Also, say one more boyfriend thing and I will hit you in the face. She raised her fists, showing a threatening stance. After this problem was solved, she called Ji Cheng, but she did not answer. Then she called Luo Qianqian, but she didn't answer the call either. Fearing that Qin LV would pester her again, she went to school to find Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian, but they had already left the campus. No answers to her calls and no one at school, she had to return to the apartment. The moment she entered the apartment, Ji Cheng's call buzzed through. However, it was the rough voice of a man that echoed through the speaker. Mu Weiwei right, bring the pictures of President Wang, or, your sisters will have to suffer. Gu Weiwei's heart sank. It seemed that because Wang Weidong and Zhou Meiqin's men had failed to catch her, they had now turned to Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian. She closed her eyes and took a deep breath as she said with a low voice, I need to hear them first. In the phone, Ji Cheng's and Luo Qianqian's voices arose. Wei Wei, call the police. Wei Wei, call my cousin. They had just spoken a sentence when the man moved the phone away. You must come alone. Bring the police or a helper and your sisters will be our food. Gu Weiwei said with teeth clenched. Address. Wenhua Road in the west outskirts, the abandoned Jingxing steel factory. Someone will lead you here, no tricks. The man directly ended the call after saying the words. She had expected that Zhou Meiqin and Wang Weidong would come to her for trouble, but she had not expected that Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian would be taken hostage. She was analyzing the situation as she opened Fu Hanjing's study and found the key for the backup car. As she came into the underground garage, she took a sports car and dashed towards the west outskirts. At the dinner with politicians in the capital city, Fu Hanjing was just talking, with wine in hand, when Su Qian called him on the private phone. Boss, Lei Meng is calling you. Fu Hanjing frowned at the guests and came to pick up the phone. What is it? Lei Meng was the chief of security of the Fu family, and something must have happened at home if he was calling. Mississippi Mu drove out of the apartment half an hour ago. She was driving way too fast for the security detail to catch up with her. Fu Hanjing's face sank as he walked towards the room's exit and asked, Did you find her? Her phone shows that she is heading west. I am going there now with my men. Lei Meng said. Seeing him leaving, Fu Shuqin caught up with him. Brother, the banquet has just started, where are you going? Wei Wei is missing. Fu Hanjing said as he entered the elevator. She normally didn't go out at night, and now she was out driving. Something must have happened. Fu Shuqin followed him into the elevator. Someone is following her, right? Fu Hanjing was silent, so Su Qian answered instead. Mississippi Mu's car left the apartment half an hour ago, the bodyguards lost her. Fu Shuqin's face sank, when he and Fu Shi left home before, he never got nervous. Now Mu Weiwei was just gone for half an hour and he was searching for her in person. It was such a huge difference in treatment. On Wenhua Road in the west outskirts, Gu Weiwei stopped the car, walked a few hundred meters and came to the gate of the Jingxing steel factory. A tattooed man sized her up, looked around and made sure that she was alone before turning to open the gate. Follow me in. As she walked she observed her surroundings. Then she heard people talking after she entered the factory. There were thirteen people inside and some were playing poker and drinking and some were smoking. A bald man was sitting on a worn-out sofa, looking like the boss of the group. Then she saw Luo Qianqian and Ji Qing, who were tied up in the corner, covered in dust and mud, looking messy. Qianqian, are you alright? We are fine. Luo Qianqian became very worried as she saw Mu Weiwei coming in alone. Gu Weiwei looked at them and found that they were not injured, she took a long breath and glanced at the bald man. Now I am here, release them. The two indecent-looking drunk men staggered over to Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian. Brother Kuan, they are so pretty, s would be a pity to release them. They slurred as two of them started to touch Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian. They both were frightened by the two's pawing, screaming out in fear with pale faces. Gu Weiwei's fists cracked. She warned them. 
remove your paws. The two drunken men heard her words and left Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian alone as they glanced at the girl who was talking to them. The angry girl looked very attractive against the light. Sure, we will leave them alone, you have fun with us first. Gu Weiwei smiled brightly as a coldness appeared in her eyes. Sure, let's finish our talk and then I can have fun with you. Bald Kun squinted at his indecent men. Why are you in a hurry, when we finish the task, she will be yours. Gu Weiwei coldly said in a calm voice, before we get to it, I suggest that you release them too. After all, it would be very difficult for us to continue, if the girls from the Ming family are hurt here. Girls from the Ming family? Bald Kun's face changed when he heard those words. Didn't you background check them before you kidnapped them? Gu Weiwei laughed with a sneering sound. You are indeed very brave to have kidnapped the niece of Chief Ming and Director Ming. Bald Kun glanced at Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian, that girl did say that Director Ming was her uncle, and that her father was some leader from the special forces or something. If you don't believe it, then turn on her phone and check her photos. Gu Weiwei reminded them. The most important thing right now was to get Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian out of danger, and Ji Cheng's background could prevent them from hurting her. Bald Kun picked up Ji Cheng's phone and leafed through the photos inside. He found the Ming family's pictures. If they were really the girls from the Ming family, then they must not irritate her. Their goal was not them anyway. Release them. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian's ropes were loosened. They ran to Gu Weiwei, grabbed her arms and said, Weiwei, let's go. You can go, but she, must stay. Two men stopped them and pointed at Gu Weiwei as they said this. Gu Weiwei patted off the dust and mud on her and said, You girls wait for me outside. No, we must go together. Luo Qianqian gripped her tightly and spoke with determination. She came to rescue them alone and they must not leave her here, by herself just so they could run away. We aren't leaving, if you are not coming with us. Ji Qing said as she shielded my Weiwei by standing in front of her and said to Bald Kuan, She is my cousin's fiance, my uncle's daughter in law to be. You must not touch her. Gu Weiwei did not know whether she should laugh or cry, but she must admit that she was very moved. The two girls themselves were already very scared, but they did not want to leave without her and instead stayed with her to face the trouble. Girls, we want her, not you two. Don't try to cause trouble for yourselves. Bald Kuan warned them impatiently. President Wang had paid a great deal of money to them this time, and they were not going to give up on the deal just because someone from the Ming family was in the way. Qianqian, wait for me outside. Gu Weiwei pulled out her arms outside of Luo Qianqian's tight grip and helplessly tried to persuade her with a gentle voice. No, we are leaving together. Ji Qing still stood in front of her despite her own voice trembling. If she stayed here, these men would not touch her because of her identity. But if she and Qianqian left without Weiwei, she would be in danger. Gu Weiwei glanced around and saw the iron staircase leading to the second floor. She said with a low voice. Then we will run away together. I will count to three and we can head to the staircase together on the second floor. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian nodded. When she counted to three, they both ran towards the staircase and up to the second floor without taking a breath. Weiwei, hurry, hurry up. Luo Qianqian went up to the second floor and turned around, only to find Gu Weiwei was missing. Downstairs on the first floor, there came a sound of fighting and the two girls looked down in fright. Weiwei. However, when they saw what was happening down below them, Luo Qianqian and Ji Cheng were both astonished. The slender girl had, within one second, thrown two strong and tall men down onto the floor, and she picked up a rusty piece of scrap steel and pierced through the hand of one of the men. Then, she kicked the other man's groin, causing such tremendous pain that he could not even utter a single sound. Gu Weiwei threw a look at the two girls up on the second floor. Stay where you are. Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian nodded. They noticed that the two drunk men who were seriously injured, were the ones who had touched them before. Gu Weiwei pulled out the bloody, stained steel and looked at the remaining eleven men, looking lethal. Now, let's have some fun. The gang did not expect that the feeble-looking girl would suddenly act as if she were possessed by a ghost, looking lethal and acting with cruelty. Bald Kun's face sank and he threw a look at four strong men beside him. Get her. The four men with muscular builds, and besieged Gu Weiwei, but the agile girl dodged their fists and quickly hit one of the men's temples. That man was so dizzy from the blow that he staggered backwards. Then the girl kicked off against one of the factory's supporting columns, and propelled forward, landing a blow on one of the men's necks. The man's neck let out a cracking sound and failed to rise again. The remaining three men were wary. 
This was a girl who was agile, quick and always hit home on her targets. Seeing his four best men collapsing, one after the other, Bald Kuan became so furious that he stood up and fiercely asked, Who on earth are you? Gu Weiwei kicked a man away and flipped backwards on the rebound. As she landed steadily, she said, I am your boss. The Gu family had hired many martial arts masters and she had studied mega fighting, swordsmanship and fencing from those masters for years. She might not be very skillful, yet her skills were already enough to incapacitate these people. Guns were forbidden in the Hua land, so they did not have any deadly weapons. That was why she dared to come alone. These men were just strong and big, and they had either been drinking or taking drugs. As long as Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian were not taken hostage, she would not be taken advantage of. Seeing his men retreating one after another, Bald Kun picked up a knife from the table and said, Get the weapons. The remaining men picked up steel scraps, sticks, and knives, surrounding Gu Weiwei gradually. Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian were both so nervous that they held onto each other's arms. They would very much like to help, but they were afraid of distracting her. As the seven men came all together, Gu Weiwei had only taken a few steps back, when the well-trained Bald Kun suddenly attacked her. She felt a punch to her back and Bald Kun almost stabbed her in the chest. Fortunately, she was quick enough to dodge, only her arm getting scratched by the blade. She was not seriously injured. They fought for half an hour and finally, when Gu Weiwei had the blood-stained Bald Kun under her feet she smiled at Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian upstairs. Come down now, we can leave. The two girls rushed downstairs and Ji Qing said excitedly, Goddess, do you know what I want to say right at this moment? Gu Weiwei wrapped her wounded arm using the coat Luo Qianqian gave to her and asked, What? I just want to say that. I want to marry you, Ji Qing said. She came here alone and brought down more than a dozen men. She was indeed an outstanding protector. The three girls walked out of the factory just as a Rolls Royce Phantom and two Hummer cars pulled over in front of her. Fu Hanjing, who was dressed in a nice suit, came out of the Rolls Royce Phantom and walked towards them. His eyes were piercing and his aura was lethal, tinted with arrogance and determination. Why did you come here alone? Gu Weiwei stared at this man who had suddenly popped up out of nowhere, in astonishment. Didn't he go to attend a banquet? Is it so difficult to give me a call? Fu Hanjing looked cold, trying hard to suppress his anger. He had told her repeatedly that if she ran into any trouble, she could call him and let him deal with it. Gu Weiwei frowned and looked at the man who had become annoyed for no reason. I can, solve it by myself. Compared to Mu Weiwei, Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian next to them were even more astonished as they stared at this handsome man in front of them. This man had well-trimmed eyebrows and his nose bridge was tall and refined. His face was so perfect that it had become flawless. He looked even better than the male stars in the entertainment industry. What was even more, was that he had an air of nobility, and it was something none of the male stars in the entertainment industry could compare to. Fu Hanjing lowered his gaze and saw the hand she had wrapped under the coat. He lifted the blood-stained hand and frowned. That is what you call solving it yourself? Just a small wound, Gu Weiwei said. The men inside were even more seriously injured than her. Fu Shiqin had just come out from inside and looked at Gu Weiwei in astonishment. He said, as he pointed into the factory, Brother, you must go and have a look. There were dozens of men inside who had been deeply wounded by her. It was not something an 18-year-old high schooler was capable of. Was she really a woman or was she a mutant? Fu Hanjing did not care about what Fu Shiqin said and instead he took her into his arms and pulled her into her arms. Let's get in the car. With hands over the wound, Gu Weiwei followed him into the Rolls Royce. A few steps away, she thought of Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian and said to Fu Shiqin as she turned her head, Second Master, please make sure they arrive at their homes safely. After saying this, she was stuffed into the car by Fu Hanjing. Su Qian, let's go. Su Qian turned the car around and took the two of them to the hospital. Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian looked at the diamond black Rolls Royce disappearing into the darkness, finding it hard to come back to their senses. Qian Qian, did I see it wrongly or not? I just saw Fu Hanjing. The best looking and the richest Fu Hanjing. Me too. He has taken away Wei Wei. Fu Shiqin looked at the two girls as he moved his hands in front of them. It is time to leave, get into my car. Ji Qing and Luo Qian Qian had just come back to themselves when they saw Fu Shiqin's face and became overjoyed. Sure. She? My name is Fu Shi Qin, Fu Shi's second brother. Fu Shi Qin explained helplessly. 
The twins looked very similar to each other so they were always mistaken for one another. After Fushi had joined the entertainment industry, more and more people started to mistake his brother for him. Hearing that he was not their idol Shi, Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian sighed and followed him into the car. So, Shi does have a twin brother. It is not my intention to be his brother. Fu Shiqin complained. Seated in the back seat, Ji Cheng and Luo Qianqian thought of Mu Weiwei, who was taken away by Fu Hanjing, and asked curiously, Master Tu, what is the relationship between Weiwei and Fu Hanjing? Fu Shiqin smiled mysteriously, well, you can guess. Ji Qing patted her face and mumbled. Qian Qian, I think I have been frightened enough for today. Me too. Luo Qian Qian added. Everything that happened today was so incredible, just like a dream. The air in the car had turned a bit distressful. Fu Hanjing had his hands over the wound on her clothes and turned towards the girl who was silent. Still hurting? She almost cried out, in tears, when the broken plate pieces pierced into her fingers, but today, she was quiet. A little. Gu Weiwei said calmly. She had been dead once, and this was just a little wound for her, it wasn't that painful. After hearing her words, Su Qian sped up without waiting to hear the request. Fu Hanjing took a look outside the window and said, Hold on a little while longer, we will arrive soon. Gu Weiwei turned to the man who was dressed in an expensive handmade suit. Obviously, he had come to her in a hurry from an important occasion. Normally, the banquet would not be finished at this hour. Fu Hanjing looked up and ran into her searching gaze. What is it? The banquet has not finished, right? Gu Weiwei asked. Just a dinner, nothing important. Fu Hanjing said calmly. Su Qian who was driving, almost burst into tears, of course he could say that it was just a dinner, but the consequences were that they would be so busy the following day, just because he had abandoned so many presidents from different companies just to come and save his woman. The car pulled over at the hospital. Su Qian opened the door as he made a call to He Qi, explaining how Gu Weiwei was injured. The three of them were just about to go upstairs when He Qi appeared in front of them to receive them at the entrance of the elevator. A tear on her finger and wounds on her feet, now her arm is injured too. Fu Hanjing, are you beating your wife? Gu Weiwei was speechless. What did he mean by hitting the wife? Fu Hanjing squinted at He Qi who instantly shut up and supported her into the office. He cut off her sleeve and checked the wound. Luckily, the artery was not cut. But some stitches are required. Having said that, he picked up the local anesthetic for the part of her arm, and the nurse prepared the tools, ready for the stitches. Fu Hanjing had her head in his arms, not wanting her to see the process. But seeing He Qi's needle and thread going into her flesh, he frowned. His heart felt that it had been gripped by something and squeezed. Be gentle. He Qi replied to him, the anesthetic is already working. Fu Hanjing was still not assured. Then be careful. He Qi stopped and snorted. Then do you want to do it yourself? The patient was not complaining, what was he complaining for? Su Qian quickly cut in seeing that the atmosphere did not seem right. Dr. He, my boss is just very concerned, please, continue with your work. Boss was very furious but he could not vent his anger on Mississippi Mu, so he had to do it to Dr. He. Leaning in Fu Hanjing's arms, Gu Weiwei could feel how the man's scent occupied her nose. She could not help but feel her heart beat faster. He Qi was still stitching as he started to complain. Now you know how to care for your girl, what did you do so that she is so badly injured? It is not his business, Dr. He, I hurt myself. Gu Weiwei explained. He Qi finished the stitching, dabbed the medicine and continued to complain. Ha, I just complained about him with two sentences and now you are concerned. Gu Weiwei. She was just trying to explain so no misunderstandings could be caused. She was not concerned. After wrapping up the wound, He Qi removed his gloves and mask, and put his hands into his pockets. Go and fetch some medicine from the nurse, don't let any water get on the wound. Be careful and avoid spicy and heavy foods. Make sure to come and get the bandages changed in three days. Gu Weiwei turned around in Fu Hanjing's arms and saw the well-bandaged arm. Will there be a scar? He Qi squinted at Fu Hanjing and snorted. If there is a scar on you, he will leave a scar on me. Gu Weiwei looked at this gentle-looking man next to her, was he so lethal? Fu Hanjing removed his coat and put it over her shoulders and placed one arm over her shoulders. Let's go. It was already 10 p.m. when they returned to the apartment from the hospital. She changed into baggy pajamas and headed into the bathroom after noticing the blood stains on her hand. The moment she entered the bathroom, Fu Hanjing followed her inside. What are you doing? 
just washing my hands. Fu Hanjin lifted her up to the sink so she could sit on the side. Then he rolled up her sleeves, took down the hand towel and wet it before wringing it out. Then he helped her to wipe off the remaining blood stains on her hands. After he had wiped her hands, he washed the towel and wiped off the mud and dust on her face. Thanks. Gu Weiwei suddenly felt that he was treating her as if she was his daughter. Fu Hanjing put down the towel and looked at the girl sitting on the sink countertop. His eyes looked profound and gentle. Weiwei, I won't allow a second time of what happened today. On the way there, he had experienced unprecedented nervousness and fear. Gu Weiwei stayed silent for a while and then chuckled. It is just an accident, it is a small wound. Do you want me to have my men's eyes upon you all the time? Fu Hanjing interrupted her coldly. Gu Weiwei's smile froze and she looked cold. Fu Hanjing, I am not your possession. Please do not interfere in my life. He liked her now, because he had not known that she was Gu Weiwei. When he came to know who she was, he would hate her thoroughly. Fu Hanjing's profound eyes turned misty, then he lowered his head and approached her. So, you will only be obedient when you become my possession? Gu Weiwei frowned and leaned backwards, creating distance between them, but her head touched the mirror suddenly and she became very annoyed. Damn, just like the table again? They did it on the table in the study and now again on the sink countertop. Fu Hanjing approached and then placed his thin lips upon her tender ones, presenting a strong sense of maleness, occupying her breath. She wanted to turn away to dodge the scorching kiss of this man, but the moment she parted her mouth a little, the man's tongue reached hers and his hand had already reached into her baggy pajamas and traveled up her back. She tried hard to dodge him, but only fell into his arms. The man's hands were moving over her back and then came to a stop upon feeling the clasp of her bra. Gu Weiwei's eyes widened and she was about to stop him when her bra was unclasped. Ah! She took a hold of his hands, trying to prevent him from continuing when the other hand of his started to remove the bra. Just when she thought that she would lose her innocence tonight, Fu Shirqin, who had just come home from outside, stuck his head in and then rushed away with his hands over his eyes. Brother, why do you keep the door open? Fu Hanjing released her lips and had his forehead against hers, saying with a low voice. Do you know what you have done wrong? Gu Weiwei nodded constantly. Had it not been because of Fu Shirqin, she would have been eaten up. Mu Weiwei might have slept with him, but she had no intention of doing so herself. Fu Hanjing took a deep breath and calmed himself down. Then he reached out for the unclasped bra and reclasped it before lifting her down from the sink countertop. Gu Weiwei dashed into her bedroom and locked the door, making Fu Shirqin in the living room, surprised and confused. It took a long time before Fu Hanjing came out of the bathroom. At the sight of him, Fu Shirqin raised his two hands, surrendering. I promise that I saw nothing. You were in the way, and I saw nothing. How would he have known that they were kissing in the bathroom with the door open? And they were doing it on the sink countertop. So his own brother who was as boring as a robot could be so full of ideas in his s asterisk x life. Fu Hanjing ignored him and drank a mouthful of water to drive away the thirst. Fu Shirqin ran off to the dining room and placed the dishes for dinner on the table one after another, trying to receive approval from his own brother. Look, I know you both haven't eaten dinner yet. So I bought some food back. Fu Hanjing received a call and knocked at Gu Weiwei's door. Weiwei, time to eat. I am not hungry. No food. The girl sounded muffled. Obviously, she was still angry about what had happened. She herself had almost been eaten up, what would she eat the food for? Fu Hanjing knocked two more times and reminded her, you can only take the medicine after food. Gu Weiwei took a look at the wound, sighed helplessly and then opened the door and walked towards the dining room. The moment she sat down, Fu Shirqin gave a rib to her and said with a flattering tone, if you are about to do something, please send a signal to me and I promise that I will stay far away from you. Gu Weiwei threw a cold look at him, no one wanted to do anything. Fu Hanjing said instead, don't always drop by. Fu Shirqin nodded constantly. I totally get it. I will also give the same warning to third brother. This was going to be the apartment for two of them and it was improper for anyone to drop by. Gu Weiwei became helpless, she found that her days to come were going to be very tough. Fu Shirqin was reminded of what happened at the factory and asked curiously, Mu Weiwei, how did you manage to bring down those thirteen strong men? Gu Weiwei thought for a while and said nonchalantly, Grandfather once hired a martial arts master to teach me. I took advantage of their terrible state. How come you were driven out by the Li family, if you are so capable? That is not scientific. Fu Shirqin asked further. Mu Weiwei had been very weird these days, as if she had become someone else totally. 
At the beginning, they had also suspected that after Muwewei left the landscape villa, it was another Muwewei they had run into again. But after some investigations, the fingerprint and DNA had suggested that they were exactly the same person. Gu Weiwei smiled coldly and suggested, maybe, you can see why it is scientific if I punch you. No thanks, no thanks. Fu Shuqin quickly turned her down. Fu Hanjing was eating calmly, totally unattracted by their topic of conversation. Then his phone rang and he picked up his cell phone as he walked into the study. Lei Meng on the other side of the phone reported what he had found. Boss, these men were hired by Wang Weidong, maybe because of what happened last time to Mississippi Mu. Standing in front of the large ceiling-to-floor window and looking at the luxurious night scenery outside, he spoke in a lethal way, give him a lesson. I get it. Boss. Lei Meng answered with a low voice. And leave none of these men behind. Fu Hanjing said and then ended the call. At the Li family of Yijing Pavilion, Zhou Meiqin had just taken a shower and took out her phone, she was feeling a bit anxious when she saw there were no missed calls. Li Jiucheng, who was reading next to her, threw her a look and said, you always have your phone with you, are you really so busy? He had never seen her behaving in this way before, such that she had her phone with her wherever she went. Zhou Meiqin wore a stiff smile and said, the planning department is doing an important proposal, which cannot be delayed. If all had gone well, President Wang's men should have already finished the job, yet none of them had given her a call. After the incident at the hotel, she had been so worried that he had not slept well for one night. She was just thinking if she should call President Wang and ask what was going on when the phone vibrated. She picked it up and her face turned pale. I, will answer a call in the study. Zhou Meiqin said as she hurried out of the bedroom. She went into the study and clicked on the message after she locked the door. It was a text from Mu Weiwei. She had just seen the picture when Mu Weiwei's call arrived. Mrs. Li, have you seen the picture? Mu Weiwei, what do you want? Zhou Meiqin was so furious that she was trembling. Shouldn't they have dealt with her by now, but what was she doing alive and well, sending her threatening pictures? Nothing. Gu Weiwei laughed indifferently and her voice suddenly turned cold. If you dare to hire anyone to trouble me, I will post those pictures online. Honestly, with such a picture, you can become more popular than your daughter. How dare you, Mu Weiwei? You can try? Gu Weiwei snorted. Zhou Meiqin took a deep breath, calmed herself down and said, How much money do you need, to return these pictures to me? As long as you don't cause me any trouble, then I will take good care of these pictures, otherwise, Gu Weiwei uttered a cold laugh and ended the cough. Zhou Meiqin was so furious that she almost crushed the phone. She was about to call Wang Weidong and ask what was going on when Wang Weidong made the call first and barked down the phone. Zhou Meiqin, you are ruining me. Wang Weidong, I was just asking you what is Mu Weiwei still doing out there? Why is she still threatening me with photos? Zhou Meiqin asked furiously. Shame on you. The two little girls you wanted kidnapped are from the Chief Ming household. If you want to die, die alone. Wang Weidong had just gotten to know that he had ordered a kidnapping of the girls from the Ming family and his men had now vanished completely. Maybe the Ming family was going to turn against him instead, and it was all because of Zhou Meiqin. He truly wanted to kill her at this very moment. Having lectured her, Wang Weidong furiously ended the call. Zhou Meiqin deleted the pictures and could not fall asleep the entire night. The following morning, she decided to meet Wang Weidong to discuss what they should do later. But she could not get through to Wang Weidong's phone, so she could only call Wang Weidong's company, where his secretary answered the call. Deputy President Zhou, President Wang had a car accident last night and he is in the middle of an operation. He can't talk with you right now. Zhou Meiqin ended the call in fright, could it have been because of what happened last night? At the Jinxiao compound. Due to the wounded arm, Gu Weiwei had to ask for two more days off and continued to rest at home. After Fu Hanjing and his men went off to the company, Aunt Wang from Landscape Villa came with food, had a chit-chat with her for a moment and then started to prepare breakfast for her. She got up early to review the lessons, although she was off from school. At around 6 p.m., Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian called after school and requested a meeting with her. They had met Fu Hanjing anyway, so she told them the address without hesitation. Within half an hour, the two girls arrived with many bags of food. Are you all right? Luo Qianqian thought of how much she had bled the night before and asked worriedly. I am fine, just a few stitches. It will be healed in a couple of weeks. Gu Weiwei asked her friends to sit down in the living room. Ji Qing could not wait and said, after we returned home last night, 
uncle called and asked about something and then he told me that the culprit who ordered the kidnapping had a car accident this morning, and now he is in ICU. Your uncle and his men are so cruel? Luo Qianqian was astonished. No, it is not them. When they went out to do the investigation, the man was already in the hospital. Ji Qing explained. Gu Weiwei frowned, it must have been Fu Hanjing who had done it, if the Ming family had not had the time to do it. He was the owner of the biggest finance group in Hua Land, and he was more than a businessman. Seeing Gu Weiwei's face, Luo Qianqian asked seriously, Weiwei, why were those men looking for you? Gu Weiwei took two sips of water from the cup and said, it is a long story, are you sure you want to hear it? We have been through so much, you must tell us the truth. Ji Qing snorted. Although she and Qian Qian regarded Mu Weiwei as their friend, they thought that she was still hiding something from them, she never told them about her family and never told them where she was living. Gu Weiwei let out a sigh and told them everything about Mu Weiwei and her grudge towards the Zhou family and the Li family. She recounted everything in a very calm way, but Ji Qing, on the other hand, became so furious that she was ready to flip the table. Damn, these people are so shameless. People's hearts are always unpredictable. It's not very strange to run into such ungrateful people. Gu Weiwei drank her water calmly. You should have told us earlier. Luo Qianqian said to her in concern. She was transferred here last term and took a long leave of absence because of the car accident. Few people from school knew her well, but they had turned themselves against her because of Zhou Lina. Gu Weiwei chuckled. It is not too late, I am telling you now. Ji Qing thought of Fu Hanjing who had taken her away last night and gossiped. Wei Wei, are you living with Fu Hanjing now? Gu Wei Wei frowned and thought for a while. Yes. Ji Qing was so excited that she burst out an exclamation, Oh my gosh, you are living with the most handsome man in Hua Land, I am so jealous. He was the dream of all the women in Hua Land, and she had lived the dream before anyone else could. Gu Wei Wei explained quickly as she saw the two girls' looks. We're not really living together, you two have thought too deeply. Luo Qianqian asked with raised eyebrows, so, are you in a relationship now or what? Of course not. Gu Weiwei took a sip of water and explained after a few moments of contemplation. Our age difference is so huge. I call him Uncle Fu. I regard him just as I would my father. Fu Hanjing's face sank as he entered the room. Fu Shuqin spoke up, Mu Weiwei, your father is here. Mu Weiwei, you are being so ridiculous. You have slept with my brother and now you say that you regard him as your father. Gu Weiwei's hand, which was holding the cup, trembled. As she heard Fu Hanjing approaching her, she sat completely still, petrified. Ji Qing and Luo Qianqian put down the snacks they were eating, stood up and said to Fu Hanjing respectfully, Uncle Fu, we are checking on Weiwei, sorry to disturb you. Fu Hanjing's face sank even more. He turned to the girl who was sitting with an unsure expression on her face and sneered. Since when did you love and respect me? Gu Weiwei let out a dry laugh. I respect and love you inwardly, Uncle Fu. He was ten years older than her and it was pretty normal to address him as Uncle Fu. Fu Shuqin tried to hold back his laughter, it was not an easy thing to do. The moment Fu Hanjing entered the room, Luo Qianqian and Ji Qing turned introverted. They did not dare to speak or eat anything. They exchanged a look and decided to leave. Wei Wei, we need to prepare for the test, so we're going to leave now. Didn't you say that you will leave after dinner? Gu Wei Wei said. Ji Qing let out a bitter smile. President Fu was too intimidating for them, making them unable to even utter a sound, losing all bravery to stay for dinner. No thanks, we better go back and practice the piano. Luo Qianqian put the stack of paper on the table and said, This is the mock exam, the teacher said that we need to go through all the mistakes. You better hurry up and do it. Having finished speaking they put on their bags and ran away as quickly as they could. Gu Weiwei saw the two girls out and then came back into the living room only to see Fu Shuqin leafing through the papers. He looked at her in astonishment. Mu Weiwei, apart from English, you have failed in every single subject. What on earth are you studying at school? Fu Hanjing was astonished too. He frowned slightly at the sight of the papers in Fu Shuqin's hands. Gu Weiwei grabbed back the papers and snorted. I have not been to school for half a year, it is already an achievement for me to reach such grades. She scored the highest grade in English throughout the entire year group and failed in everything else. Look at your Chinese subject, you scored 53, Fu Shuqin said. Gu Weiwei stared at the red crosses on the paper and sighed. There were so many classical poems in Chinese subject and it was never a subject studied in a land, so of course she did not know anything about it. 
math of Hualand was so damn difficult too. At the noble school of a land, she majored in arts and they did not need to go through so many tests either. The questions were not that difficult either. She had gone into the mock examination with little preparation, and so the scores were of course horrible. Seeing the distressed girl, Fu Hanjing approached her and consoled her by patting her on the head, chuckling. Need a teacher? She had applied for the film academy, and she might not be able to enter the school with such grades. Gu Weiwei thought for a while and nodded. Get me a maths teacher, I can handle everything else. Maths gave her a headache. As for the remaining subjects, she could pass them with her amazing memory and she could raise the scores herself. Fu Shuqin asked amusedly. Handle everything else? Really? There were just a few months left before the college entrance exams and she would definitely have to repeat the semester next year. Fu Shuqin, what do you mean? Are you saying that I am stupid? Gu Weiwei glanced at him with displeasure. Fu Hanjing said, seeing her annoyance, he is talking about himself. Huh? Fu Shuqin just could not believe what his own brother had said. Or not? Fu Hanjing lowered his tone. Fu Shuqin could not say anything more under his brother's pressure. Yes, I am talking about myself. I have always been a stupid person. Gu Weiwei. Due to the mistakes on the papers, she spent the following days doing tests and exercises. In the afternoon, Fu Hanjing got off work early and called out to her when he saw her bending over the desk and writing. Weiwei, get changed, we need to visit the hospital. Gu Weiwei put down the paper she was working on and went to her room to get changed. She pulled open her wardrobe and found that all of her old outfits were gone, all of them were now the most fashionable outfits from the most famous brands instead. She opened the door and asked Fu Hanjing who was waiting for her in the living room. Where are my clothes? So when Ed Wong talked about tidying up her clothes for her, she was putting these things away. Everything in the wardrobe is yours. Fu Hanjing said. I mean my old ones. Gu Weiwei asked with anger inside her heart. Fu Hanjing leafed over her homework indifferently. If you don't like them, I will get them replaced tomorrow. Gu Weiwei clenched her teeth and said patiently, If I wear those clothes to school, people may think that I am being paid to be the concubine of someone. Fu Hanjing thought for a while and said, I will get some suitable ones delivered to you tomorrow. Gu Weiwei went through her wardrobe and found that all of them were dresses. She picked out a blue knitted dress which made her look sweet and pretty. Seeing her coming out of the bedroom, Fu Hanjing was amazed and praised her generously, very pretty. Knitted dresses were made for beautiful people, especially the color blue which didn't suit everyone, but she looked perfect. Gu Weiwei flushed and said, let's leave now, the teacher is coming soon, right? I haven't finished the math paper. As the two of them arrived at the hospital, He Qi was examining an old patient. He said to them as he saw them coming, I'll be right there. Fu Hanjing rolled up her sleeves, fearing that He Qi would use too much strength and rip off the bandage. The old man looked at the two and saw one man and a girl, the former of whom was tall and strong and the latter was small and slender. He subconsciously thought that they were a father and a daughter. It is not a common thing that a father can be so devoted. He Qi, who was writing the prescription, scribbled on in amusement. Sir, he is her boyfriend, not her father. But Fu Hanjing was so old compared to the girl, and add a few years more and he could easily be her father. Seeing the patient off, He Qi went over to check the wound. Fu Hanjing had already removed the bandage and what he needed to do was change the medicine, it would only take a few minutes. However, Fu Hanjing looked unhappy. He also showed a very depressed face on the way in too. Gu Weiwei was amused and asked, Why are you so angry? Because you are mistaken as my father? Fu Hanjing glanced at the girl who was amused and said with a low voice, No. Gu Weiwei found that he did not sound right, so she flattered. But you are better looking than my real father. Fu Hanjing's face turned brighter and he said as he drove into the garage, Shi Qin must have brought your teacher. I have a video meeting, you can do the homework yourself. Gu Weiwei nodded and followed him into the elevator. Fu Shuqin called out to her the moment she entered the apartment. Hurry up, your teacher is here, he is the top student at your school. Before Fu Shuqin finished speaking, Gu Weiwei had already seen the teacher and she could not help but curse inwardly. Why was it Qin LV, her ex, who was her teacher? Seeing the two people coming in one after another, Qin LV rested his gaze upon the pretty girl in the blue knitted dress, whose expression was not quite right. Is that you, Mu Weiwei? Seeing her name written on the test paper, he found the scribbles resembling hers. But he still could not believe that this Mu Weiwei was the one that he used to be friends with. Fu Shuqin glanced at them too curiously. So you two know each other, that's great. 
Damn it. Gu Weiwei cursed inwardly, what was Qin LV doing here? Fu Hanjing squinted when he saw how Qin LV looked at her in a curious way. Qin LV stopped looking miserable and said, we used to be, classmates. He had heard from his family that there was a girl who moved into the Fu family and constantly courted Fu Hanjing. But he had never expected that this girl would turn out to be Mu Weiwei. Fu Hanjing looked sideways at the calm-looking girl. Classmates? But Qin LV did not look like he was greeting her as a classmate. Gu Weiwei nodded. Strictly speaking, they were really classmates. LV is the eldest grandson of the Qin family, a good friend of the Fu family. He has been a very outstanding student since he was young and he is good enough to tutor you, Fu Shiqin said. Gu Weiwei did not object but instead went into her bedroom, changed out of her dress and changed into her baggy pajamas. She circled all of the questions she found confusing on the maths paper. Explain these. Fu Shiqin patted Qin LV's shoulders and said with a begging tone, teach this girl well, it's such a face-losing thing when she has a score like this. His brother was a very smart person and it would be a loss of face for the Fu family if his girlfriend was bad at studying. Seeing her calm expression, Fu Hanjing went into the study for his work because he has an upcoming video meeting. There were only two people left, herself and Qin LV in the living room, after the other two had gone. Gu Weiwei tossed the math test paper to Qin LV and started to finish the Chinese paper instead. Staring transfixed, Qin LV watched the attentive girl who was leaning over the table, thinking that he had not seen her for half a year. This pretty girl was quite different from how he had remembered her. She wasn't smiling that brightly anymore, this time. Mu Weiwei, leave Fu Hanjing. What? Gu Weiwei looked up, what was this boy doing? Fu Hanjing is not a good man. You will get yourself killed if you are with him. Qin LV warned her. He grew up in the Qin family which had a close relationship with the Fu family, and he knew what Fu Hanjing was capable of and he had even seen some of the things that he had done. Anyone who had gone against him tended to end up horribly. She was only 18 years old and she was not able to deal with Fu Hanjing. If she irritated him, she might end up being like those previously, who were against him. There is no good man in this world. Gu Weiwei said calmly. She understood this, be it for herself or Mu Weiwei. Seeing her being unmoved, Qin LV said seriously, Mu Weiwei, haven't you always wanted to learn to play the piano in Italy? After the college entrance examination, I can take you there. Gu Weiwei looked at the sincere-looking young man curiously, was he trying to run away with her? Having said those words, this sincere-looking boy, looked at this girl in front of him with great hope and waited for her reply. This boy's proposal did not touch Gu Weiwei but made her somewhat impatient. Master Qin, I have no interest in you or Italy. Mu Weiwei had dreamt about studying in Italy, but she was not Mu Weiwei anymore. She was Gu Weiwei, and she was in her twenties, and she truly had no interest in teenagers. Mu Weiwei, didn't you hear what I just said to you, Fu Hanjing is not a good man, you don't know him. Staying by his side will. Qin LV, if you are unwilling to be my tutor, please go. Gu Weiwei interrupted him coldly. She had thought that Fu Hanjing was a tyrant but when she was reborn as Mu Weiwei, she found that he wasn't that scary at all. He had been quite forgiving towards her and the annoying Mu Weiwei who used to pester him in the past. Mu Weiwei, are you trying to get yourself killed? Seeing her unmoved once again, Qin LV took hold of her arm, touching her wound. Gu Weiwei frowned out of pain. Get off me. I won't, unless you promise me that you'll leave him. Qin LV did not release her but tightened his grip. Gu Weiwei felt that her newly healed wound almost started to bleed again, so she tried to remove his hand yet Qin LV tightened his grip again, annoying her completely. Qin LV, get off me now. In the study, Fu Hanjing heard the noise and frowned. Then he said to the man in the video, Just a moment, please. As Fu Hanjing came into the living room, he saw Qin LV gripping Gu Weiwei's wounded arm, so he took hold of Qin LV's wrist and bellowed with a low voice. Get off her. Qin LV felt that his wrist was at the verge of breaking and when he looked up and saw the lethal-looking man, his grip on Gu Weiwei shook and he let go of her immediately. In the next second, he was flung away by a large force and staggered into the wine shelf in the corner. Gu Weiwei had her hand over the wounded arm and looked at the man who came to her rescue. Thanks. Unassured, Fu Hanjing rolled up her sleeves and discreetly revealed the corner of the gauze where he saw the wound was leaking blood. He frowned. Put on your clothes, let's go to the hospital. Let's, call Dr. He first. Gu Weiwei said. She did not think that it was serious enough for her to visit the hospital, this man was making a big fuss out of nothing. 
Fu Shiqin waited for Fu Hanjing for a while in the study and saw that Fu Hanjing had not re-entered the room again, he came out to urge him back into the meeting when he realized that something was wrong in the living room. What is, going on? Tell them to hold the meeting for half an hour. I have something I have to deal with. Fu Hanjing said. Fu Shiqin nodded helplessly and went back to the study to pause the meeting. With one hand upon Gu Weiwei's head, Fu Hanjing brought her to the sofa, he made a call to He Qi and confirmed with him repeatedly about the necessity of visiting the hospital before ending the call. Then he threw a cold look at Qin LV next to them. You had better give me a proper explanation. Qin LV took a deep breath and mustered up his courage, as he said to this intimidating man, Uncle Fu, please let Wei Wei go, she is my girlfriend. Fu Shi Qin heard the words the moment he came out of the study. He looked at Qin LV transfixed and then at Gu Wei Wei. Mu Wei Wei, are you cheating now after a few days at school, with Qin LV, who has been their friend since they were little? He had thought that his brother would get furious, but he looked calm and turned to Gu Wei Wei. Is that true? No Gu Wei Wei looked equally calm. Seeing her denying their relationship, Qin LV continued. She wrote me a love letter when she was in the third year of junior school. She came to Inching High School because of me too. Fu Shi Qin suddenly thought of something when he heard the words. So, the heart-shaped homemade chocolate you received on your birthday and the love letter read out by third brother was written by her? Gu Weiwei held her hands against her forehead and explained, many people wrote love letters to him, and I was just one of them. Just one of them? You wrote for one year, one letter a week, so persistent. Fu Shi Qin complained. Gu Weiwei could feel that Fu Hanjin was getting very annoyed next to her, so she glared at Fu Shi Qin and said, all teenagers have their dream boys, but he did not become my boyfriend even though I wrote him love letters for one year. Fu Shi Qin looked at his brother's sunken face and said to Gu Weiwei, you must explain to us what has happened. What should I explain? Gu Weiwei rolled her eyes and snorted. There are so many men who want to sleep with me, I am pretty, all right? Fu Shi Qin could tell that his brother's face sank even deeper and then said to Gu Weiwei angrily, you were transferred to his school and you claim that he wants to sleep with you. Gu Weiwei glanced into Fu Hanjing's direction, neither of them was her boyfriend, why must she explain anything to either of them? Seeing Fu Hanjing standing in silence, Qin LV mustered up some words and said to him, Uncle Fu, if you want a woman, there are millions of women in Hua Land who want to be with you. He looked at Gu Weiwei. Weiwei is too young for you. Gu Weiwei glared at Qin LV with annoyance, she was already 25 years old, okay? You dumb boy, I can't stand it anymore. I wrote you love letters and got myself transferred to Inching High School for you, but you never said yes to me. I confessed to you at junior school and three years later, you told me that you are my boyfriend. I have lost interest in you, boy. Chin LV looked at her with a broken heart and asked between sobs, so, you have changed your heart to someone else? To Uncle Fu? Changed her heart to someone else? Fu Hanjing raised his eyebrows and looked at the girl next to him, looking slightly more pleased. No one has changed her heart. Gu Weiwei said furiously. Qin LV looked hopeful again. If so, come with me. I have not changed my heart to anyone else, but I don't like you either. Gu Weiwei said seriously. Qin LV approached her but stopped his footsteps under the lethal stare of Fu Hanjing, not daring to move an inch. If you don't like Uncle Fu, what are you still doing here? All right then, just assume that I like your Uncle Fu. Can you leave now? Gu Weiwei truly did not want to explain anything anymore and spoke impatiently. Mu Weiwei. Fu Hanjing checked the time on his watch and said coldly, Shi Qin, take him back home. Fu Shi Qin patted Qin LV's shoulders and interrupted what he was about to say. Let's go now. It is getting late. Qin LV looked at the girl sitting next to Fu Hanjing, unconvinced, and his two hanging hands clenched into fists. If she had changed her heart to someone else, he might have been able to get her back. But this man turned out to be Fu Hanjing, whom he has never been able to catch up to no matter what. Fu Shiqin pulled the man out of the door and mumbled when they were outside the room. You truly frightened me. I had thought that something was truly going on between you two. Weiwei likes me. Qin LV affirmed seriously. She had been interested in him for all this time, but for some reason, she suddenly did not like him anymore. After she had the car accident and left the hospital, he had been looking for her all the time, but he had failed to find her after searching the entire capital. He had never expected that she had moved into the Fu family home and lived with Fu Hanjing. All right, all right, no matter whether it was she who liked you or you who liked her, you have no hope with her anymore. Fu Shiqin patted the young man's shoulder and consoled him. Study hard, 
and you will get a better girlfriend at university. This boy had called him and asked him to find a person for him, sometime in the past, but he had been busy working with the Wilson Group, so he had promised to help him after Fu's Enterprise and the Wilson Group signed the deal. He had not expected that it was Mu Weiwei he was looking for. No matter what had happened between him and Mu Weiwei, he knew that his brother would never give up on the goal he had set his eyes upon. I only want Mu Weiwei, Qin LV said determinately. Fu Shuqin knocked on his head and said, You are so stubborn. You promised that you would not have a relationship at such a young age. Do you want me to tell your father and grandpa? Qin LV went into the car in silence and said to the driver, Drive. The young man looked at the lit apartment and looked resolute. When Fu Shuqin returned to the apartment, Gu Weiwei was working on the homework alone whilst Fu Hanjin was already back in the online meeting in the study. Fu Shuqin had just finished the plan and was about to go to sleep in his room when Fu Hanjin pointed out the stack of files on the table. Read them and report the key points to me after you finish them. Isn't that what you were supposed to read? Fu Shuqin protested with a bitter expression. Fu Hanjing ignored his protest, stood up and went into the living room and called out to the girl who was bending over the maths paper as if she were staring at her greatest enemy. Bring me the homework. Gu Weiwei was surprisingly glad to see him and brought the paper and homework into the study obediently. Seeing Gu Weiwei entering the room, Fu Shuqin felt so bitter in his heart, so his brother gave him his work, because he wanted to spare time to be her tutor? Fu Hanjing took over the paper and looked at the questions she had circled, explained the points to her and the formulas needed. Then he asked, Can you figure them out by yourself? Gu Weiwei nodded and started to work over the desk whilst Fu Hanjing continued to go through the file. After she had finished her homework, Fu Hanjing put down the file and circled out the mistakes whilst explaining patiently. This is a mistake, let me show you how to do it correctly. Gu Weiwei nodded and wrote it down again. Is this right? Fu Hanjing chuckled with a praising tone and continued to explain the next question for her. Seeing his brother's gentle look, Fu Shuqin tidied up the files feeling furious and was just about to leave the chokingly love-filled study when. Where are you going? Fu Hanjing squinted at him. I need to stay away from a couple in love. Having said those words, Fu Shuqin carried the files into the living room and continued doing the extra work. At 11 o'clock, Gu Weiwei finally finished her homework. Fu Hanjing checked the homework for her and saw the time. It is very late, go and sleep. Gu Weiwei looked at the files on the table. You, are still working? Fu Hanjing nodded. Yes, there are some urgent files I have to handle. Gu Weiwei put away her things and left the study, she put down what she was carrying in her bedroom and then went to make two cups of black tea in the dining room. She gave one cup to Fu Shuqin who was helplessly reading through the files in the living room and the other to Fu Hanjing in the study. Thanks for helping me with my homework. Fu Hanjing picked up the maroon-colored tea and took a sip, and he smiled as the warmth greeted his mouth. Thanks for the tea, you can go and sleep now. Maybe it was because Fu Hanjing found that it was a lot of fun helping the girl with her homework, so much so, that he left work to go home very early the following day. But when Gu Weiwei, who should have been home ages ago, still had not shown up by dinner time, he made a call to her. Still at school? Gu Weiwei lowered her voice on the other side of the phone. I have enrolled myself into a math class, I'm still here now and will be late home. Fu Hanjing stayed silent for a moment. All right, continue with your class. But after he ended the call, his face sunk. So did she think that he was not good enough for her? What was she doing at extra math classes? After the extra maths class, Gu Weiwei came back to Jinxiao compound at around 9 p.m. How was the class? Fu Hanjing asked indifferently. Gu Weiwei let out a sigh. The teacher was good, but she said that she had something to do at home so she ended the classes and refunded me the tuition fees. Fu Hanjing frowned. Then what are you going to do? Gu Weiwei sighed. I will look up other classes. There are quite a few around school. Fu Shuqin who was also home said, you can ask my brother to be your tutor, no need to go to any extra classes. It would be useless for her to seek out any math classes, maybe the math classes around Inching High School would all be shut down the following morning. Because their existence had stopped the boss from being her tutor. Two hours ago, he had seen the boss making calls to someone to shut down the class center. So this man, who kept telling them to be scrupulous in separating public from private interests, was totally doing the exact opposite. Gu Weiwei shook her head. It is okay, I can't disturb your work. No, you aren't disturbing me. Fu Hanjing said. Fu Shuqin added inwardly, yeah, nothing can stop you from flirting with this girl. 
Gu Weiwei took a look at Fu Hanjing's amazingly handsome face and turned him down resolutely. I can go to a maths class, it is much easier for me. She was worried that she would not be able to control herself if she faced this handsome face every single day. All right then, suit yourself. Fu Hanjing leafed through the files in his hands calmly. Sure enough, Mu Weiwei found no math classes around the school. She stared at the man sitting opposite her when she came back home, feeling dubious. None of the math classes around school exist anymore. Did you do that? The weird thing was that all of them were gone, and she was not stupid enough to not feel dubious. There was only one person around her who was capable of doing this within a short period of a day. It was him. Fu Hanjing chuckled and asked. I am not that childish to do such a thing. Fu Shuqin's lips twitched as he bellowed inwardly, it was exactly this shameless man who did it. Gu Weiwei suspected that it was him who did it, but she had no evidence. Fu Shuqin knew that it was him, but he did not dare to reveal the truth. Without any math classes being open, Fu Hanjing became her maths tutor. Every day after school, she would either go over other subjects or learn maths from Fu Hanjing. In this way, half a month passed extremely quickly. Ji Qing came to link her arm with hers in the afternoon after school. Goddess, I am going to have my piano test next week, please save me. All right then, let's see how well you have practiced. Gu Weiwei nodded and went to meet Luo Qianqian. The two of them played the five songs for the test one after another. Luo Qianqian was doing well, but Ji Qing was not following the rhythm. She showed her patiently one part after another and that made her slightly more proficient. It was not until 8 p.m. when she and Ji Qing left the Luo family home. Goddess, honestly, don't you have any feelings towards such a good-looking man like Fu Hanjing? What feelings? Gu Weiwei pretended to be dumb towards this question. Like sleeping with him. Ji Qing said excitedly, there are so many women who try to sleep with him in Hua Land. He is so good-looking and his body is so great. You, don't you have any feelings towards him? Gu Weiwei looked calm. No. Are you a girl or not? Ji Qing looked annoyed. Didn't you just ask me to be your sister-in-law? Now you are telling me to sleep with Fu Hanjing, so fickle of you. That is the girls of Hua Lan's dream. Mine too. If you reach it, my dream is realized too. Ji Qing let out a sigh. Gu Weiwei was speechless. What kind of dream was that? All right, her dream had been realized. She might not have slept with Fu Hanjing, but Mu Weiwei had. Then I can hook you two up, if you really want to be with him. Ji Qing shook her head. No, no, I am frightened in front of him. Let's just make it stay a dream. She found it very hard to breathe the other day, when she ended up being in the same room as Boss Fu. The two were just walking along when Ji Qing felt her stomach started to ache. She said, Wei Wei, I need to visit the bathroom. You go home ahead of me. Are you alright? Gu Wei Wei asked her worriedly, seeing her turning pale. No, it is okay, you can go home now. It is very late. Ji Qing said as she went into a cafe to use the bathroom. Gu Weiwei had to leave alone first. Just when she was about to get on the bus, Ji Qing called again and asked pitifully, Goddess, I am on my period, can you buy me some pads and give them to me? Startled, Gu Weiwei said, Okay. Then she returned to the convenience store, bought the pads and delivered them to the bathroom in the cafe. Ji Qing came out of the bathroom and saw her waiting, she patted her on the shoulders. Goddess, what are you looking at? I called your name twice. Gu Weiwei smiled. Nothing, let's go. As they reached the bus station, Ji Qing left first whilst she herself was left still standing at the bus stop, as she had missed the bus that could take her home. But if not for Ji Cheng's reminder, she would not have remembered that she was late for her period for over a month. And the night when she was reborn into Mu Weiwei, Fu Hanjing had forcefully slept with her. And as she thought even further, she suddenly remembered that he was not wearing a condom that night. Gu Weiwei stood at the bus stop for a long time before finally calming herself down and leaving the bus stop. She went to find a pharmacy store and bought a pregnancy test. The moment she came out of the pharmacy, her phone inside her bag rang. She answered it and the low voice of a man arose on the other side. Where are you? On my way home. Fu Hanjing heard the trembling in her voice and he stayed silent for a moment. Where are you? I will come and pick you up. No thanks, the car I just ordered is arriving. Gu Weiwei's voice trembled even harder as she started to feel a bit unassured. Fu Hanjing repeated with a low voice, Where are you? Gu Weiwei felt a bit speechless. Even if she did not say a thing, the hidden bodyguard would report the location to him in the following minute anyway. So, she told him where she was after all. 
A quarter of an hour later, a black Bentley pulled over on the road. She pulled the door open and took a seat inside. Fu Hanjin was on the phone and ended the call after a few minutes. Then he sized her up and noticed that she looked a bit distressed. Are you upset? No, just a headache from the wind. Gu Weiwei was nervous and gripped the bag inside her hand even harder. After saying that, she felt a warm hand over her forehead. It went away when he was sure that she didn't have a fever. Then he stretched out his hands and held her head over his shoulder. There's still some way to go before we are home. You can take a nap. Gu Weiwei sat up straight and held onto the bag, which held the test, inside her arms, praying that the result would not be what she expected it to be. Mu Weiwei was causing her so much trouble and left so many problems for her to clean up after her. If she gave her a child, then she would have a lot of problems. As the two came back to Jinxiu compound, Su Qian pulled the car over, opened the door and helped her out. Fu Hanjing got out of the car and saw the girl hurrying away, and frowned. Gu Weiwei went upstairs first and intended to hide the bag after she came home, but she bumped into Fu Shuqin who was holding a cup of hot cocoa, which splashed all over her. Good thing that I had let it cool down, otherwise you would be burnt right now. Gu Weiwei patted away the stains on her clothes and saw the glistening donuts on the table. It's so weird of you to eat desserts. You are a man. I asked for leave and queued for half an hour before getting them. I had wanted to share two of them with you but now I won't. Fu Shuqin said as he picked up the donuts on the plate and walked away. Gu Weiwei went to her bedroom, locked the door and let out an anxious sigh when she took out the pregnancy test. She was thinking of how to do the test without being discovered, when there came a knock at the door. Weiwei, dinner is ready. Gu Weiwei put away the test into the bag, zipped it up and placed the bag into her wardrobe. Then she got changed, opened the door and went out to have dinner. They were eating dinner whilst Fu Shuqin was eating the donuts by himself and drinking the hot cocoa. She frowned. Wasn't he worried about diabetes? Fu Shuqin squinted at her. If you want to eat them, help yourself. Your cookies were good last time, but do remember to add some more sugar when you bake them for me next time. Fu Hanjing squinted at him and Fu Shuqin became startled, and changed his words immediately. I mean, when you bake cookies for my brother next time, share some with me. True, boss has to be the first one to eat the cookies before the subordinates got any. Silent, Gu Weiwei finished her dinner and went back into her room, then she went into the bathroom with the pregnancy test. In the dining room, Fu Hanjing could not help but wonder about Gu Weiwei who was hurrying into the bathroom. Then he made a call. Did Qin LV go to school today? The bodyguard who was supposed to keep watch of Gu Weiwei on the sly, answered, Master Qin was not at school today. Fu Hanjing ended the call and frowned deeply. She was really not being normal today, if it had not been because of her meeting with Qin LV. Fu Shi Qin took a huge bite out of a donut and asked. Did Qin LV and Mu Weiwei meet at school on the sly? No. Then why are you so upset? Fu Hanjing said, she looks a little, nervous and guilty. Guilty? Nervous? Fu Shi Qin wiped his hands as he finished the food. Then maybe some other boys are courting her at school. She is quite attractive to boys. Fu Hanjing looked at him, suggesting that he should continue. Fu Shi Qin wiped his mouth with a napkin and analyzed the possibilities for his brother. Just think about it, she is 18 years old, and she likes those young boys of the same age. You might be a little bit too old for young girls her age. He said and as he felt the lethal look of his brother, he shut up and said no more. But it was true. He was not young and he was very mature. And he was not as sunny and bright as those young boys at school. Although he had treated Mu Weiwei as his girlfriend, she did not regard him as her boyfriend. It had been half a month since he started to work extra hours here in the living room creating a couple space for them. But he only spent time talking about math problems with her. He did not have any capability in courting the girl, although he had the intention to. Su Qian will be on business the day after tomorrow, and you can take his place. Fu Hanjing said as he got up and went back into the study. Brother, please, I am your brother, your own brother. Fu Shuqin pleaded for forgiveness when the study door was shut ruthlessly in his face. What was he doing every single day? His elder brother was mistreating him and his younger brother was causing him trouble. What a miserable life he was having. Half an hour passed and Mu Weiwei was still in the bathroom. Fu Shuqin needed to visit the bathroom, so he went and knocked on the door. Mu Weiwei, have you drowned in the bathtub or fallen into the toilet? Hurry up, I need to take a shower and take a piss. In the bathroom, Gu Weiwei was sitting on the floor and praying towards the test, mumbling. Just one column, please, just one. 
Mu Wei Wei, we are friends by destiny, please don't cause me too much trouble. You can leave me however much trouble but not with Fu Hanjing's child. After a long time, she still did not dare to open her eyes to check the results. Mu Wei Wei, any longer, and I will break the lock and enter. Fu Shiqin urged outside the door. Gu Wei Wei took a deep breath and opened the eyes. Anyways, let me face it. She picked up the test and checked the result. Then she wrapped the test and the packaging into her clothes and opened the door of the bathroom. Seeing her dry hair and unchanged clothes, Fu Shiqin mumbled curiously. You are in here for a whole hour, what are you doing when you haven't even showered or washed your hair? Constipation, alright?